All right, let's uh, let's begin by talking a little bit about polynomials. All right, polynomials, and in particular polynomials with real coefficients. So something like this: uh, p of x equals to a n x to the n da 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 plus um, a two x squared plus a one x plus a naught. Right. Um, so. If it's a polynomial with real coefficients, long story short, what we learned was that these things can be factored, right? They can be factored into a product of linear factors and um, irreducible quadratic factors, all right? Uh, factors which cannot, you know, which are like quadratic factors that uh, correspond to uh, sums of squares, really. Now, let, me, let me try to be more explicit about that. Um, okay, so like, for example, if we look at p of x equal to, I don't know, how about um, x squared plus 1 times uh, x squared minus 3x um, plus 2, all right. Well, x squared plus 1 we're kind of stuck with. We can't do anything more there, right? But the other one we can factor. So this is what? This is x minus 2 times x minus 1. And voila, I can see from this, I can immediately see that I have p of 2 equal to 0, and I have p of 1 equal to 0. Those are the only real zeros. And, um, you know, uh, so that that's the factored form, right? The standard form, we could figure out pretty quickly, that would be x to the 4th minus 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus x squared minus 3x plus 2. And combining like terms in standard form, we'd have what? x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 3x squared uh, minus 3x uh, plus 2. Sorry if this is boring. Um, so there's the standard form versus the factored form. Now the standard form is, you know, it's it has its charms. Um, certainly it's easier to differentiate than this guy. But in terms of um, analysis of this function, my goodness, the the, uh, the factored form is to be preferred because it has so much data that's so readily apparent, right? I can see the zeros right off like that. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can graph, basically. I mean, more or less. What does this thing look like? Well, I've got, it's a 0, 1, it's got, a, oh, my graph is too small, 0, 2. Um, its y-intercept is apparently 2. Um, it's fourth order, it opens up, so it's, you know, roughly speaking, this thing looks something like, I don't know. Now, of course, we can do better with calculus, right? We can we can improve that graph, looking for intervals of concavity and increase and decrease and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll get to that in a later video. But my point is, that much is, I'm I mean, roughly speaking, that's the graph, right? So, now, if I ask us to do things like, say, solve the inequality, solve the inequality, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 2, if I said, find where that's positive, right? Now, there's a couple different ways you could go here, right? You could think about the graph, and you say, oh, well, obviously it's positive here and, and there. I'm sorry, let me use the proper pointer. It's positive here and, and here. Or, if you like, you could draw a number line, right? It's got zeros at 1, it's got zeros at 2. Um, it can't be 0 anywhere else because that's it by the factor theorem. And so it's got to stay positive or negative anywhere else, basically by the intermediate value theorem, right? Um, so, let's see here. So I can just plug in a point. For example, over here I've got 0. Plug in 0, you get 2. That's also readily apparent from up here. If you plug in 0, you get 1 times 2, which is 2. So this this thing is uh, it's um, it's positive over here. You can write as many or as few of those pluses as you want, whatever. Um, and then between 1 and 2, if you plug in, for example, 1.5, it's pretty easy to see from this formula, 1.5 is positive, negative, positive. So if I've got positive, negative, positive, I get negative, right? So it's negative up in here. And then once you get past 2, you've got positive, positive, positive. 
So you got plus again. Um, another way to see that, of course, is well, anytime you have a linear factor or a linear factor to a to an odd power, you're going to flip signs in a sign chart. Um, this thing does nothing; it's always positive, and so that's the structure. And so from this, I can see that the solution set in interval notation is what it is minus infinity to one, not included because I said greater than zero, and then union with what? 2 to infinity. And so there you go. That's the solution set in terms of interval notation. All right. Um, if I wanted to solve the same inequality, you know, for, for less than zero, less than or equal to zero, right, then I would have 1 to 2 included. All right, well, enough about that. So the point is, we have polynomials, we can factor them. When we factor them, we, we gain all kinds of insight about them. Probably the most important kind of polynomial that I can tell you about is the quadratic polynomial. So quadratics are important. Um, we'll see them again and again. So let's just fix uh, let's, let's, let's fix a little bit of uh, um, what do I say? Um, I just want to talk to you about completing the square, basically, all right? So, um, I guess my first move, right, is to factor out the a. So if I factor out a, right, I've got x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a, all right? The idea of completing the square is to put all of the variables into one thing that's squared. So that's pretty simple, all we do is we do x, and then if I want something to square out to this, I take half of that. So I get b over 2a. I take that thing, I square it. All right. Now doing that, it reproduces, when you FOIL this out, I get back the x squared, and I get back the b over a times x. But doing this also adds a b squared over 4a. So to be fair, I have to subtract b squared over 4a squared. All right. All right. But then, you see what I have is I've got a, right, times x plus b over 2a, quantity squared. And let's see here, to put this in a common format, I can do this as um, minus, what, here I got b squared uh, minus 4ac divided by uh, 4a squared. Right. Perhaps this is starting to look uh, familiar. Now, if I if I I think, oh well, I'm going to just say that this thing. Um, I mean, so basically, then you can rewrite this as a times what? If I if I look at this term here, uh, sorry, I use a different color here. Um, look at this as this whole thing as being. I don't know. Let's give it a name, Pac-Man. Pac-Man squared. So we've got basically x plus b over 2a, right? That quantity squared minus Pac-Man squared. Well, that's the difference of squares, right? Assuming what? Well, Pac-Man's what then? If that's Pac-Man squared, it looks to me like Pac-Man will be the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared, right? Of course, 4a squared is 2a squared, so this can be written as the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right, but you know what the difference of perfect squares is, right? So this is a times x plus b over 2a minus Pac-Man, right? Sorry about the Pac-Mans, I'll make them go away soon enough. x plus b over 2a plus Pac-Man. Right? All right, so anyway, getting rid of the extra brackets outside I don't need. This is really a times what? Times x. And oh, look, check it out. There's a 2a here, there's a 2a here, so I can rewrite that as just plus b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and x plus b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? 
Now I hope you recognize what's going on here. You should see that what we've just done to this little calculation here is if you look at this as sort of let's say this is x minus root root 1 and if you call this thing x minus root 2 what we've got then is root 1 and root 2 are given by what? They're, they're, they're equal to you know minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over over 2a um, let's see here this one goes with the uh, the minus and that one goes with the plus because it's minus that has to be minus r1 this is minus r2 all right but there's your roots now what does that assume that assumes I can take the square root right so what would happen then if, if b squared minus 4ac was complex uh, if this be, I should really say it's not it's not complex it's, it's negative it's positive or negative or it's zero right so those are those are the three cases um, so but the, the interesting thing is when you study complex variables it turns out this calculation still is legitimate even in the context that this square root is negative it still makes sense the uh, algebra of complex numbers bears it out so rather than go further into this I'm just going to show you some examples. Um, because the examples are almost more important than that general derivation. Um, so here's some examples. I find that students are generally unfamiliar with completing the square, which is very unfortunate because completing the square is very, very important for how we interact with quadratics in terms of substitutions and so forth in calculus. Um, very important. Um, of course, factoring is still important, don't get me wrong, but uh, completing the square is something you, you really need to learn if you don't know already. So x squared plus 4x plus 5. To complete the square here, I do x plus 2 quantity squared. So what I do, again, is I take this number, whatever it is, I divide by 2, I add it. Then, okay, so what is that? Well, if you square that out, this is x squared plus 4x plus 4. I've got a 5 here, so to be fair, I should say plus 1. And there it is. That's the completed square version of this. That's all there is to it. Um, now I'm deliberately making the leading coefficient to be 1 in these because it's easier to understand. Now if I have if I have x squared minus 6x plus 7, all right, let's say, let's see here, this one we have, so I get x minus 3 quantity squared, right? And let's see here, I'll write it out this time. So if I did that, to be fair, I have to subtract 9. At this point, if you don't believe me, check it out. If you FOIL that out and you subtract 9, it's exactly the same as the two, these two terms, all right? Maybe you were taught some sort of blind algorithm to do this in your high school algebra. That's unfortunate. You should try to understand what you're doing in terms of maintaining the sameness of, of quantities. All I'm doing is I'm adding 0 in a creative way here. It's nothing more than that. Plus 7. That was here. It's still here. So what I have then, right, is I have x minus 3 quantity squared, well, minus 2. So you see, this first quadratic expression versus the second are, are radically different. This is what's called, again, irreducible. Whereas this one is reducible. It's the difference of squares. And I say irreducible, that's with respect to real numbers. In complexes, it can always be factored, all right? Um, but in real numbers, this can be factored as well. This is x minus 3 minus the square root of 2. x minus 3 plus the square root of 2, right? Look, ma, no hands. I mean, I mean, look, ma, no, no quadratic equation, right? We're just completing the square. Completing the square has within it the quadratic formula. Um, this is less important, but just side comment. This factors, right, into x plus 2 minus i times x plus 2 plus i, if you're willing to go there. All right. That's just a bonus comment. doesn't really matter to us too much, for the most part. Then, of course, the other thing that can happen is sometimes when you're completing the square, you have something like this, x plus 4, x plus 4. So you go to complete the square, x plus 2 quantity squared, right? But how embarrassing, right? Because when I complete the square, I have to subtract 4, 
I mean, in other words, this, this is exactly x plus 2 squared, so that's it. So this is not irreducible. It's not like this either. This, there's two distinct real roots here, right? This one is the repeated case. So um, if I call this case 1, if I call this case 2, if I call this case 3, if we look at what's called v squared minus 4ac, the so-called, you know, the discriminant, uh, these these different cases, right? What do we got? In case 1, we have what? We have b squared minus 4ac less than 0. In case 2, we have b squared minus 4ac greater than 0. In case 3, we have b squared minus 4ac equals to 0. These are the three cases. So when you see something quadratic, we completely own it. We know what happens. It's one of these three things. And that's it. End of story. Now, granted, um, completing the square is messier when the leading coefficient is not 1. But we can figure that out. Um, you know, fine, I'll do an example. If I had 2x squared plus, you know, 3x plus 2 as an ugly example. So what you can do is just factor the 2 out, right? And then that brings us back to where we started, 3 halves x plus 1, factored to 2 out, right? Factoring, something you need to know how to do. Um, okay, so then, then we can complete the square. So that's x, what, x plus half of this is 3 fourths. That squared. Now, to be fair, I have to subtract 9 sixteenths, because that's 3 fourths squared, plus 1. But 1, I prefer to write as 16 over 16, for reasons of fractions. Let's see here, so this is x plus 3 fourths squared, and then let's see here, 16 minus 9 is 7. So this is plus 7 over, over 16. So there you have it. Uh, it's a sum of squares, so this is also an irreducible quadratic. Now, you might say, well, okay, so there's no real zeros here, right? So I don't need to do this, because all I need to do is come up here and check, you know, is b squared minus 4ac less than 0? If it's less than 0, then I know there's no real zeros. So that's all I need to know. I don't... This doesn't tell me anything. Well, that might be true as far as factoring of polynomials goes and graphing, but you know what? This is actually really important to substitutions we'll be making in the first week or two of classes, so it's important to understand completing the square. Understanding completing the square is one less thing you have to learn in the middle of Calculus 2. All right, so that's why I spent some time here talking about completing the square, but that's about it. That's all I got. Of course, there's more algebra you need to know, but you know this is one of the things people tend not to know and they should know. All right, well, in my next video, I will go on to functions and other things. Maybe I'll just go into calculus. I, I think the best thing to do, really, you guys, is just to go scan through my Chapter 2 in the Calculus 1 notes. In there, I will do things like introduce what's an exponential, you know, more on what do graphs of quadratics and cubics and so forth look like. And um, I'll, tell you, I'll make a short video on what a function is, but y you guys can just, if this is boring to you, you know, watch it at double speed or something, and eventually I'll get to the calculus. Thanks, guys.